Humans should be tricked into cannibalism to fight climate change. Oh, are you going to love this one? I can't wait for this comment section for this video. I'm telling you, it's going to be fantastic. At least I can get rid of some of those too bad about the tattoos, too bad about the makeup, too bad about blah blah blah. I never answer these comments because they are boring. That's why I have this little guy answering for me. Today we're going to talk about the next level solution for the food problem. If you've seen my video on eating bugs and insects with Nicole Kidman, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. This one is a little bit more controversial, but this is the next plan. This is their plan for you. And how do I know? Well, you can't find it on the World Economic Forum website yet. They have to normalize it first. And how do they do that? I'm glad you asked. They are doing that by pushing out some interesting articles and um, celebrities into straight into media to just get your mind used to it, to get into the conversation and then slowly start to talk about it and accepting it. So what is it? Cannibalism. What is cannibalism? Honestly, I thought everyone knew what cannibalism was until I was I found myself in a comment section where I shared an article about this and I said that, that this is their plan for the future. And someone said, uh, what the hell is cannibalism? And um, let's do some wiki. Human cannibalism. Human cannibalism is the act or practice of humans eating the flesh or internal organs of other human beings. You know, like serial killers sometimes do. Person who practices cannibalism Cannibalism is called a cannibal. Cannibalism has recently been both practiced and fiercely condemned in several wars, especially in Liberia and the Democratic Republic of the Congo. It was still practiced in Papua New Guinea as of 2012 for cultural reasons. A form of cannibalism popular in early modern Europe was the consumption of body parts or blood for medical purposes. This practice was at its height during the 17th century, although as late as second half of 19th century, some peasants attending an execution are recorded to have rushed forward and scraped the ground with their hands that they might collect some of the bloody earth, which they subsequently crammed in their mouth in hope that they might, might might thus get rid of their disease. Ew. So humans eating humans, that is the practice of cannibalism. And we kind of know that this is still practiced in those tribes where they don't have any kind of contact with civilization at all. But get this, if this doesn't freak you out, well, some people know or believe or think, at least talk about that this is going on today with modern people right in front of our very eyes. Let's look at this. There was a tweet from someone called Ricky Rebel that said, Don't eat humans, hashtag Katy Perry. Katy Perry says human flesh is the best meat. Cannibalism got a bad rap. You say, what? I say, what? Going as far as to claim that cannibalism is way more popular than you might think. Oh, I know. Katy Perry also claimed that so many people in Hollywood tell you that human meat is the best, the absolute best meat in the world. Again, ew. Speaking on French radio, the Bon Appetit singer also claimed cannibalism has gotten a bad rap due to squeamish Christians and their hypocritical virtues and morals. Oh, those. Morals. Who needs those? But consuming the flesh of humans is actually super healthy and good for you. Not for the one being eaten, of course. <laughs> well, that explains a lot about Hollywood weirdos. Second that. So just like you saw that Nicole Kidman was pushing insects and there was this video with her eating bugs. He, she ate a whole menu, five courses of bugs, something like that. Well, yeah. So now they are getting celebrities to do the cannibalism pushing. Okay, let's see this. Cannibalism is perfectly natural, a new scientific history argues. There are very few scenarios where I could see myself considering the flesh of a fellow human being as food. And the ultimatum, eat today or die tomorrow, comes up in all of them. Most people are probably with me on this. But Bill Schutt's newest book, Cannibalism, A Perfectly Natural History, reveals that from a scientific perspective, there's a predictable calculus for when humans and animals go cannibal. And far more humans and animals have dipped into the world of cannibalism than you might have imagined. I'll take it that being from McDonald's shot a vertebrae zoologist uh, at LIU Post 
and the American Museum of Natural History dives into cannibalism's history, its place in the kingdom, Animalia, and the source of its taboo. He makes no secret of his distaste for these over-sensationalized accounts, not because of the gore, but because there's just so much more to cannibalism. Instead, he opts for a keenly scientific approach. I'm taking things that seem grotesque and misunderstood and horrify people and putting it through the eyes of a zoologist. And what does a zoologist see, exactly? He sees the perfect natural sense of cannibalism, the evolutionary biology of eating one's own kind, and, oddly, the wonder of it all. And here comes the interesting part. The long history of European aristocrats eating human parts as medicine. Upper-class types and even members of the British royalty applied drink or war, concussions prepared for human body parts, and they continued to do so until the end of the 18th century, shut writes in the book. In the book, you describe getting invited over for dinner by one of your sources to eat her placenta. How was that? Was it good? Yeah, it was really the prep that made it taste good. Granted, the husband was a chef and he knew how to prepare it. Oh. With the wine I had bought, damn, man. It smelled great, it didn't taste bad. I wouldn't do it again. I don't have any regrets. I did this. Would you eat another human, not a placenta? Not because of overcrowding, predation, competition or hunger, just because. No. Ooh, happy there was some sense in this man, at least. I am starting to regret that I'm doing this before dinner. Let's see what National Post has for us. Cannibalism, not a barren behavior study finds. It's actually pretty common across thousands of species. Okay, we're scrolling down all over here and we get to this part. But over the decades, evidence has been gathering for an alternative view. Cannibalism, it turns out, occurs in hundreds of species, perhaps thousands. The behavior varies in frequency be between major animal groups, non-existent in some, common in others. It varies from species to species and even within the same species depending on local environmental conditions. The behavior serves a variety of functions depending on the cannibal and some of these have nothing to do with stress or captive conditions. There are even instances in which an individual being cannibalized receives a benefit. Wow, that is really a stretch. Before his death in a boating accident in 2000, Gary Polis, an ecologist at the University of California, Davis came up with a list of cannibalism-related rules for invertebrates. Immature animals are consumed more often than adults, he found. And many species do not recognize individuals of their own kind, especially eggs and, Im and immature stages. Yeah, that's why so many people kill their own tiny babies. As anything other than food. He noted that cannibalism was more common in females than in males and that as alternative forms of nutrition decrease in availability, incidence of cannibalism will increase. Is that the plan? Lastly, in a given population, cannibalism is often directly related to the degree of overcrowding. By the 1990s, polis generalis... Ge gener <laughs> By the 1990s, polis generalizations had been observed among widely divergent animal groups, not just in vertebrates. The benefits of consuming one's own kind, it seemed, can outweigh the costs. That price, though, can be substantial. Cannibals that consume their own relatives remove those genes from the population, reducing what scientists call their inclusive fitness. In the most famous example, the four people of New Guinea were nearly driven to extinction as a result of their ritualized consumption of brains and other tissues cut from the bodies of deceased kin. Many had died of kuru, a neurodegenerative condition similar to mad cow disease, and their tissues contained the pathogen, spreading it even further. So, in a very long explanation here, I scroll down, and it seems that uh, what he's saying is that embryos often eat other embryos in utero. In instances where the parents are unable to provide enough to eat, the firstborn will kill and consume the younger sibling. During times of stress, this, an, this is an efficient way to produce well-nourished offspring albeit fewer of them. And the interesting part, it isn't just for animals. Are there instances where in the animal kingdom human cannibalism makes sense? And if so, could this behavior resurface in the future? Cannibalism may be gruesome and repugnant to our current sensibilities, but it has been widely practiced for a variety of reasons. 
From kings to commoners, Europeans too once routinely consumed human blood, bones, skin, guts and body parts. Uh, some of us know about the blood consumption, not going into that today. They did it without guilt, a form of medicinal cannibalism. They did it for hundreds of years and then they made it believe it never happened. Throughout their long history, body parts were such important ingredients in Chinese culinary... The Chinese and their diets. Uh, ingredients in Chinese culinary cannibalism that the historian and author Qi Rei Chong devoted a 13-page chapter in his book Cannibalism in China to methods of cooking human flesh. Rather than an emergency ration consumed as a last resort, there are many reports that exotic human-based dishes were prepared for Chinese royalty and upper-class citizens. Populations are growing, resources are dwindling, deserts are spreading, and the societal rules that bind us together are proving more fragile than we ever imagined they could be. Maybe it is wise to remember that human cannibalism, so unthinkable now, was not uncommon not so long ago. Not sure I want to remember that. Reporting from Sweden, let me present to you the pride of Sweden. A Swedish scientist says humans should be tricked into cannibalism to fight climate change. Yeah, pride of Sweden. The more I look into these things and the more I am making these videos and this content, the more I learn that Sweden is the root of all evil. Yeah, I said it. So here's a fresh one, 2022, July 27th. Swedish scientist says humans should be tricked into cannibalism to fight climate change. Yummy. Humanity must stop being conservative about the idea of eating human flesh, according to a professor from the Stockholm School of Economics, who is urging people to embrace cannibalism in order to fight climate change. Speaking on Swedish television, Professor Magnus Söderland claimed it's time for humanity to awaken. Awaken. He's, he really is using that word. To awaken. To the idea of devouring human flesh because it is more sustainable than meat and dairy, or even eating insects, if food sources become scarce in the future. Professor Söderland also claimed that conversation about taboos of cannibalism can change over time and that people can be tricked into making the right decisions. The right decisions. When asked during a, an interview if he would like to eat human flesh, he admitted he would be open to it, the publication reports. Söderland also said nearly 10% of his audience say they were open to trying human flesh. So, this is what I'm talking about. They are slowly, slowly putting it here and there into media, talking about it, having lectures on it, and uh, suddenly people are just getting used to id the idea. The more you repeat something, the more you will believe it. I feel somewhat hesitant, but not to appear overly conservative, I'd have to say I'd be open to at least tasting it, he told Sweden's TV4. He would be open to tasting it, but he thinks, he, but he believes that people should be tricked into eating humans. Also, like I jokingly said before, but, but Loki, not a joke, McDonald's. The professor also told his audience that humans should eat insects and, brace yourself, they're dead pets. If you're eating animals, your dead pet might make more sense than insects and your dead brother, I guess. This is also twisted. Professor Söderland is merely the latest prominent figure to endorse cannibalism. Yeah, and here we get to Katy Perry again. This week, the New York Times published a headline saying cannibalism has a time and place, and that time and place might be here and now. Cannibalism has a time and place. Can you stomach it? Many people were horrified that the newspaper of record seems to be, be normalizing cannibalism. <laughs> this is a fun tweet. Um, you okay, New York, New York Times? I know the past couple years have been rough, but this seems extreme. Maybe try some self-care first. I don't know. <laughs> This one is fun. <laughs> I will not eat the bugs and I certainly will not eat my neighbors. If you're planning a funeral for a relative or friend in the future, they will just send you home to eat her or him. So back to the Swedish scientist again, but then they say it's not the first time a scientist has suggested the idea. Again, with the climate change. Climate change is likely to put stress on our agricultural system and cause severe food shortages in the future. Behavioral scientist Magnus Söderlund recently suggested that because of this, people might one day consider eating human flesh. In 2018, ev evolutionary biologist Richard Dawkins put forth a similar idea. As global temperature continues to rise, Söderlund said in a talk at the Gastro Summit in Stockholm, the consequences for agriculture could cause food to become more scarce 
which might force humans to consider alternative forms of nourishment. And then they are connecting this to an article where, where they say that Neanderthals ate each other and that they were cannibals too, just so you can get used to the idea. In 2018, evolutionary biologist Richard Dawkins wondered if it would be possible to grow meat from harvested human cells in a laboratory, just like they're doing with fake meats now. Like Söderlund, he called the idea an interesting test case that might demonstrate whether humans could overcome the yuck factor in order to do something they considered moral, like reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Well, let the climate freaks do that. You can eat your grandmother. But of course, the suggestion of cannibalism is rife with problems. Jean-Vierre Gunther, director of End Climate Silence, a nonprofit that advocates for more representation of climate change in the media, told Business Insider that to suggest that cannibalism is a solution to climate change is about as bad as climate denial itself. I don't think that it should be even entertained in any seriousness but exposed as a kind of propaganda that only makes it harder for us to transform the world in the ways that we need to. For Dawkins and Söderlund, cannibalism could be a way to prepare for a future in which supplies of some major food staples are wiped out. As climate-related disasters like floods, droughts and extreme heat continue to get more frequent and extreme, agricultural producers will find it more difficult to, uh, difficult to grow crops. In less than a decade, the world could fall short of feeding every person on the planet by 214 trillion calories per year, or about 28,000 calories per person. Söderlund's suggestion involves removing flesh from a corpse and serving it to humans, while Dawkins raised the possibility of taking stem cells from a living human, culturing them in a lab and allowing the mature cells to grow into meat. Would that make any difference to you? I know that some vegans, for example, had said that if no animals get killed and, and hurt, they could still eat the meat if it was lab-grown like this and no one had to be slaughtered. So I'm guessing that this is how they will normalize the eating humans too, growing it in labs because they don't have to have a, a face or know that it someone has been killed or died in a way, I don't know. The idea that we would be able to administer this in any kind of rational systemic way is so absurd, Gunther said. It would mean our whole culture would descend into barbarism. Well, yes, yes. Thank you for being the voice of reason, jean -Bierre. A recent report from the United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, IPCC, found that a quarter of all food worldwide is lost or wasted. By improving the way food is harvested, stored, packaged and transported, the report said producers could address food shortages. Of course, that's where we should start, not by eating our grandmother or the fat neighbor of yours. Climate change drove our early ancestors into cannibalism. Cannibalism has severe health risks for humans. A fatal disease linked to the practice of cooking dead bodies and eating them at funerals affected members of a tribe in Papua New Guinea until about 2009. More than 100,000 years ago, the world saw a dramatic spike in global temperatures that wiped out large mammal species like bison, reindeer and mammoths. The period of rapid warming left some Neanderthals in Western Europe without a consistent food source, so they most likely resorted to eating each other, according to a study published in April. Okay, so let's get to the real fun part. The comment section. I told you, I told you in the beginning, the comment section will be my favorite part of this video. I want to hear the discussions. Would you eat human flesh if it was lab grown? Would you, as a normal vegan, eat animal flesh if it was lab grown too? I know that a lot of vegans don't mind the meat itself. It's just the fact that it's a, it's a moral issue. You don't want someone to be killed just because you can eat something. And that's all logic to me. But then there are those health vegans. They don't want to eat the meat or dairy at all. And that's also logic to me. But the human thing, here is where it gets real tough. Where would we get the corpses? Would it be sick dead people? Would you want to eat someone that is sick and dead well of course he has to be dead but if the person was sick let's just play with the idea that a person died of cancer body full of tumors but they remove them and then 
they cut off some parts that was that were healthy and then they would just prepare it like they do any animal meat like they would do any animal meat freeze it package it and then you can find it in the freezer at the store and you will go oh yeah look here it's um, baby back ribs from a child that died of cancer it wouldn't say that he died of cancer it wouldn't even say child it would be just like the normal meats you would find in the store now it would be called something entirely else and um, it would be sliced into parts that that doesn't even resemble a body or a body part or anything and if you're already a meat eater is it a big difference between eating a pig and eating a human and i'm taking pig as an example because they are anatomically very similar would you eat person bacon (laughs) man bacon (sighs) female bacon whatever i am a hundred percent sure that cannibalism still exists today and because we are so repulsed by it of course this is not something they talk about i know there are theories about this already i'm not talking about those specific theories i'm just entertaining the idea that this already exists among the very rich and the very that can have whatever they want in life in this world and they because when you can get everything from everywhere at any time i do believe that your boundaries expand a lot i do believe that your rules and morals kind of stretch i don't believe that every very rich person is an evil person that that's not at all what i'm saying i'm just saying that you have a new variety it's a whole new world you have a a variety of of foods experiences those sorts of things i'm not saying that it is so i'm saying that's what i believe there are all sorts of theories around this there has been this theory for a very long time that uh, there are some very very rich people with with huge ranches where they have hunting parties so they kidnap children or people or whatever and hunt them for food or just play I don't know. This is not a very foreign idea to me. I do believe this happens or have at least have happened. Now I just want the comment section to explode. Give me all the theories you have heard. Give me everything around this because this is so important. Give me everything, every theory about what you think will happen in the future. If you think that this will actually happen and when and if you think or know that this already is happening and i'm not just talking about the common serial killer you know the there's always this story about some uh, some german weirdo that has been caught killing people and eating them and then the police find all sorts of body parts in their fridge because the neighbors have started complaining about some rotten stench from their apartment i'm not talking about those people I'm, i'm really talking about this organized cannibal practice We can't deny that there are a lot of people disappearing never to be found again. Like, never. Ever. Again, I'm not saying that they end up in the hands of a rich cannibal. I'm just saying that people are disappearing never to be found again. So maybe this is happening. I want to discuss. I love discussions of all sorts. So just go ahead. And while you're here, if you're still here subscribe and like this video if you like it it helps me to reach out to everyone that wants to know what's going on in the world as it turns out cannibalism is going on in the world and will continue to do so so thank you subscribe see you next time bye